just a bit more to the left. My wife barked out instructions as I pinned the banner to the wall. The baby shower was today, and to say that my wife was excited would be an understatement. I finished preparing for the party and got the heck out of there. I went to my friend's house until the celebration had blown over. We talked about how crazy it was that I'm about to be a father, the stress hitting me all at once. I'd felt the impact of the news as soon as my wife told me, but now, the time coming so close, the pressure was on. At the end of the night, the baby shower came to a close. My wife was content with how the party went. Life moved on, each day filled with more worry than the last. Her due date came, but the little guy still wasn't budging. In the following days, her stomach blew up in size. At first we thought it was normal, but it quickly expanded far larger than I'd ever seen before. She started waking up in the middle of the night, screaming and groaning from the pain. One night, she shrieked in her sleep, clenching her pillow, yelling out in agony. We decided to take her to the hospital, hoping there was something we could do. The moment we wheeled her inside, everyone's eyes shifted to us. Dozens of onlookers, mouths left wide open, and eyes locked onto my wife's stomach. A woman darted out from behind the counter and quickly took her inside another room. I sat on the nearest vacant seat, sliding to the edge in anticipation. It wasn't too long after that that a nurse came and got me. She led me into the room, my wife heavily sedated, laid out on an operating table. The doctor pulled me to the side and brought me up to speed on what was going on. He told me he'd never seen a pregnancy this late before, that delivering safely would be a major risk. As we conversated, my wife let out a horrible scream. A massive object began moving under the skin of her stomach. She began seizing, shaking violently as her mouth filled with a bright red foam. The medical equipment began beeping all at once, an echo of sounds, the charts darting up and down rapidly. I stood back, frozen, afraid of what my unborn child was doing to my wife. After minutes of pure chaos erupted, my wife suddenly sat still. Her eyes rolled to the back of her head, and her charts went flat. The doctor looked at me, horrified at what we'd all just witnessed. She's dead. The rest of the medical team got the attention of the doctor spinning him around as he broke the news to me. He rejoined his team, trying to at least save the child, given the circumstances. They gruesomely carved my wife's lifeless body, trying to save the child before oxygen ran out. They began pulling its head out, then another, then another. The nurses gasped as I peered in between them, trying to hone in on a better view. The doctor jumped back as they finished, mumbling prayers underneath his breath. I jumped up and parted the group of medical staff, now laying eyes on what killed my wife. There were three heads, but they weren't triplets. All of the skulls melted together in a twisting vine of limbs bound by wrinkling skin. Each of the mouths had sharpened teeth, stained with the insides of my wife. The child gasped for air with each of its heads, heaving, unable to breathe. Two of the heads jerked around and eventually slumped over, but the last one peered up with its tightly sealed eyes, gazing at me even through the blindness, and stretched out a wicked smile.